it is actually my pleasure to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari. He is the first deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, and he will act. I'm hearing a phone but um, he will actually be talking to us on leveraging fintech to power the new inclusive and cashless economy in Africa. So Dr. Opoku Afari, if you are ready, we are ready and waiting to hear from you. And once again, I welcome everybody to the second Digital Banking Summit. Thank you, Mohammed. Julian, we will now have Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari go live. Okay. Good morning to everyone uh, and welcome to this very important, very, very important uh, uh, summit. Uh, let me acknowledge the captains of banks and financial services industry that are gathered all over the continent and the world, rep representatives of financial technology companies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a big privilege for me to deliver the keynote address for the second annual Digital Banking Summit. My profound appreciation goes to the International Center for Strategic Alliance for the honor to speak for a second time at this important summit. And speaking at the second time for this important summit signifies the importance that I and that of Bank of Ghana attach to the course of this summit. Also, I would like to commend the International Center for Strategic Alliance for its commitment to the African digitization agenda, which has made it possible for this year's event in spite of the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. To the many participants who have joined online from diverse countries, thank you for keeping faith with the Digital Banking Summit. Ladies and gentlemen, about a year ago, the Maiden Banking Summit was held in Accra and brought together a number of people in one location for a healthy exchange of ideas on how to scale up adoption and the use of digital financial products and services. We concluded by reaffirming our commitment to digitization and left in high spirit to pursue this noble cause. Beyond a year after the summit, the world, has, uh, the world was confronted with the COVID-19 pandemic and has put to test policies, strategies, and achievements of digitization in various countries. Significantly, the restrictions imposed on human movements as part of measures to contain the pandemic has more than ever highlighted the importance of financial sector digitization and the agency of the cash light agenda's implementation. It is for these reasons that the theme for this year's summit digitizing of the banking and financial services industry en route to a cashless or cash light Africa is appropriate for further interrogation of financial sector digitization. Although the quest for financial sector digitization and cash light society predates the COVID-19 pandemic, lessons learned from the pandemic have stimulated discussions towards retooling strategies to accelerate and expand usage of digital financial products and services. For this reason, I will draw extensively on the lessons in my speech. Globally, access to digital accounts has increased tremendously, providing a strong basis for digital payment transactions. In Ghana, the number of active mobile money accounts has increased from 11.1 million in 2017, when the last global FINDEX report was published to 15.9 million as at the end of August, 2020. However, scaling up of usage of digital payments will require growing the proportion of active mobile money accounts, which depends on availability of feasible use cases within the community in which account holders live. In this regard, it is important that policies are implemented to promote widespread merchant acceptance, to create the network effect necessary for active usage of digital payments by account holders. Although regulations, policies, and strategies promoting digital payments provide for merchant acceptance, they are not adequate to encourage extensive adoption since the onboarding requirements are steep 
inflexible and burdensome for micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. On the contrary, the customer side of the payment market has received overwhelming support in the form of tiered know your customer account types, thereby enhancing inclusion. Correcting this policy imbalance is critical to incentivizing both sides of the market for uptake of digital payments. Tiered KYC accounts for merchants is therefore a must if digital wallets are to have value in everyday use. In all this, the role of government in providing policy policy direction and also leading by example by adopting digital payments in its operations is paramount. Accordingly, in May 2020, the government of Ghana launched new policies to quicken adoption of digital payments and accelerate financial inclusion. The policies include the National Financial Inclusion and Development Strategy, which seeks to increase financial inclusion from 58% recorded in 2017 to 85% by 2023. Digital financial services policy is also part of the inclusion development strategy to guide orderly development of a resilient, inclusive and digital ecosystem that supports digital delivery of financial services. And last but not the least, the last pillar is a cash light roadmap which provides an implementation plan with deliverables for building a digital payments ecosystem. These policies were developed in collaboration with stakeholders and are expected to be comprehensive guide for a comprehensive guide for building a holistic and inclusive digital financial ecosystem. Ladies and gentlemen, in line with the inclusive and digital financial ecosystem project, the government is piloting a digital payment platform that will serve as a single point of access for all services offered by ministries, departments, and agencies for government. The platform was developed by, developed by a consortium of Ghanaian fintechs and is expected to bring greater transparency and efficiency to the collection and disbursement of government revenues. User experiential learning from transacting on the platform is expected to boost user confidence in the digital financial ecosystem and enhance adoption. As is expected, the Bank of Ghana, as regulator and supervisor of the banking and payment system, is at the center of the financial sector digitization uh, uh, agenda. To this end, Bank of Ghana has introduced a series of reforms to position the financial sector to deliver digital financial services in okay. digital financial services in a sustainable manner that is also supportive of financial stability. The key reforms are highlighted in the bank's five-year national payment system strategy, which sets forth the policy direction and guidelines that will promote an enabling environment to develop the Ghanaian payment and financial system. It leverages on opportunities provided by digital technologies to promote competition efficiency, innovation, and financial inclusion within the payment ecosystem. Fintechs have been identified as critical enablers of digitization in the national payment system strategy on account of their capacity to deliver innovative and affordable financial products and services that meet the needs of various cust customer types. As a consequence, the Bank of Ghana in July 2020 issued a licensing application pack based on the principles of regulatory proportionality to permit diverse fintech groups to participate in the payment system in line with the Payment Systems and Services Act, Act 987. Significantly, a standard license category which does not require proof of capital has been introduced to encourage innovation solutions of startups. With the expansion of the bank's regulatory scope, we have set up a new office called the FinTech and Innovation Office that has been established in the bank to provide regulatory and supervisory focus on emerging payment products and business models while fostering innovation. The office is, is responsible for promoting the cash light and electronic payments program of the bank through licensing and supervising 
dedicated electronic money users and payment service providers. Indeed, we recognize the enormous value of fintechs in prosecuting the cash light agenda and are committed to nurturing and supporting their development. We have therefore identified the regulatory and innovation sandbox as an appropriate tool for testing new ideas, products and business models and evolving policies supportive of innovation without risking financial stability. Ladies and gentlemen, the subject of central bank digital currency has gained much interest among central banks and the Bank of Ghana is no exception. Besides providing enabling environment for issuance of electronic money by banks and payment system service providers, we believe it is time for the Bank of Ghana to explore CBDC to actively support digitization of payments. In fact, the CD CBDC is a matter of time and it is for this reason that the bank is at its 91st Monetary Policy Committee briefing declared its intention to pilot a CBDC to be called the ECD. We have since undertaken preparatory works towards commencement of the pilot and hope to pay attention to integrity, security, data privacy, and consumer protection, as well as the implications on financial stability and monetary policy transmission. Understandably, digital banking is the next thing to consider to provide enduring support to financial sector digitization. Already the Payment Systems and Services Act, Act 2, 2019, has fostered collaboration among banks and payment service providers to digitally deliver banking services through platforms of payment service providers. With this development, some of the fundamentals for digital banking have been firmly established in Ghana. We are currently building on the emerging partnership models to develop a framework for licensing and supervising digital banks. Ladies and gentlemen, admittedly, the existing supervisory approach, practices, and tools may be inadequate to deal with digital banking. Supervisors have to reorient their supervisory approaches to becoming more agile, adopting modern technologies, harnessing and leveraging the power of data to continuously remain relevant in the digital financial sector. Central banks need to put in place measures in order to avert new forms of risk as the ecosystem remains exposed to the activities of new entrants. Notwithstanding the strides made in the digitization of the Ghanaian financial services sector, coupled with the issuance of the cybersecurity directive, the sector is still confronted with the threat of cyber attacks on the payment systems and platforms. The utmost threat to the Bank of Ghana, however, is the lack of awareness and ignorance of ordinary citizens to social engineering scams perpetuated by fraudsters. Ladies and gentlemen, today, uncertainty is right, not only about the cause of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also about the aftermath on the state of financial inclusion. Let us consider all available options that will stimulate the adoption of the digital financial services beyond the immediate term and address all potential drawbacks in our quest towards an all-inclusive and sustainable digital financial sector. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize that the fact that as digitization evolves, the path ahead of us is one of rapid adoption, collaboration, and partnership. I sincerely believe that the various topics to be discussed today on artificial intelligence, opening banking application, blockchain technology, and more importantly, the future of banking post the pandemic will offer new thoughts and perspectives, as well as stimulate financial intermediation efforts to a brighter outlook through the adoption of digital technologies. On this note, let me say a big thank you to everyone for your kind attention and I wish you all a successful deliberations during the summit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Opoku Afari. We are most grateful for all everything that you have shared. You know, as he said, I think for me, two of the things that I took away from it that I would like to just remind everybody is one, the government and the, the, the Bank of Ghana, but this also goes for other countries, but you have policies that are now being put in place to help drive 
financial inclusion to help drive that digital agenda. And we really need companies, local companies as well, that are willing to step up in their respective countries and, and push this to, to foster financial inclusion. If, if the Bank of Ghana makes the playing field open and nobody takes advantage, we are still no further ahead. So I'm really encouraging everyone on this call, take up the challenge, take up the challenge and find a way to help digitize our country. Next up, so Dr. Opoku Afari, thank you so much once again. We are most grateful for everything that you had to tell us today.